Focus. Ideation. Innovate. Enable. Welcome to another episode of United Technologies Presents Transforming Cities, Transforming India in partnership with CNBC TV18 and MoneyControl.com. I'm Nantara Rai. Much has been done in recent years to make Indian businesses aware of social responsibility as an important segment of their business activity. The Companies Act of 2013 makes it mandatory for large companies to spend at least 2% of their net profits on CSR activities. But CSR in India has yet to receive widespread recognition. Today on the show, we look at two specific projects that are making a big difference to our society via effective CSR implementation. On the show today, we have Sachin Golwalkar of United Way of Delhi and Dr. Shruti of Humana People to People India. They tell us about the initiative. Kalpanakar and Ravi Chandar of Center for Public Problem Solving speaks on initiatives to help Bengaluru transform into a better city to live in. Palash Roy Chaudhary of Pratt & Whitney, UTC India shares his insights on how companies can make the best use of their CSR outlay. And last but not the least, we have Bhaskar Chatterjee of the Indian Institute of Corporate Affairs who shares his expert views on the role of CSR in the Indian context. Pehel, which means to initiate or take the first step in Hindi, is aimed at providing assistance to more than 2,000 families of migrant laborers through sustained intervention to improve their education, health care and living environment. This community development initiative in Chakarpur village Gurgaon was created through a partnership with United Way of Delhi and Humana People to People India, a non-profit community development organization. Pehel is uh, United Way uh, uh, of Delhi's flagship program. And we have created this integrated, uh, you know, development program for urban migrant uh, population. And this has been funded by United uh, Technology. And uh, it's, we also have a field partner, which is in the field it's being executed by Humana People to People. Uh, Humana People to People India is currently working on 65 projects across 5 states in India. And Pehel is just one of the initiatives that we are currently working on. Right in the backyard of MG Road, there, there was this Chakarpur uh, location, where there are many uh, private pockets of land, which are owned by uh, owners around here. But they are managed by uh, thekedars who have their uh, linkages and routes with, with uh, various uh, locations primarily in, in West Bengal and in UP. And uh, you have these tenant populations which are, which are very poor, they are settled over here and offering different kind of services to the posh localities in Gurgaon. One and a half year when I start working, it was really hard for our people to get uh, trust from the people of the slum because they all are migrant and they came here to earn money. They want intention to earn money. And then uh, mainly they are the, ex the beneficiaries are extrapolates and made. We are actually looking at connecting them, going, reaching them out across three or four major areas. One is education, health, livelihoods, and sustainability. People come from the rural villages and many of the children discontinue because maybe they don't have uh, uh, they have not been to school there and they don't continue school here so they go into child labor also to drive home the point that girls education is important we have uh, you know provided certain incentives and scholarships to nearly 75 girls over here to continue be in school and continue in school in education we have a step up centers hundreds kids are coming to our school till till now and then we have a 50 uh, Pehel girls, those are girls from uh, 10 to 14 years, those are coming to, to our, our project and we are giving them extra classes and coachings. A lot of population is dependent on the quacks over here and uh, because of that there are several issues with the, with the face by going to unqualified doctors. What we did was to set up an evening clinic with, uh, with a, uh, a retired doctor in uh, which it was run like an OPD, which is link, link, linkages to the government uh, health facilities. We are looking uh, forward that how this project can be sustained. And we are working in the su sustainability that we are start linking with the government system. So we are linking with the PSC centers. We are enrolling our kids to the government school. 
and then we are empowering the, empowering the people that they take the responsibility on their hand when we will face out. Creating bank accounts that many people who come from the villages, they don't have blank account, they can't access a lot of government schemes. So nearly 1000 uh, people have opened their bank accounts because we have actually raised their awareness and, and made those bridges and many of them are availing uh, schemes like the Aadhaar you know now uh, for uh, social uh, you know to access other benefits of the government you can't focus on education without taking into account health you cannot take into uh, health without taking into account livelihoods we are looking at a minimum uh, period of 6 years we have we are reaching the 3 years milestone and when we uh, you know close uh, or when, when we move out as as change agents from this community we would want to ensure that there is no kid who is out of school all uh, the members have got bank accounts the awareness level is is extremely high and there there are enough change agents who can continue the same catalyst approach of you know furthering the vision of mission of raising awareness or uh, you know bridging the bridging any gaps we continue to implement such programs on scale we have got plans to identify other locations where we are currently uh, thinking about initiative integrated programs and we have got ongoing programs at several locations in uh, to improve quality of government schools in terms of vocational training uh, to improve the environment and responding to disasters on that note, it's time to slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll head to Bengaluru to understand how locals and residents of the city can bring about positive changes via CSR. Stay tuned. First of all, I see companies now measuring up to reality, understanding the nuances of the legislation and the rules, getting their act together, forming their board committees, and then beginning to connect with the voluntary sector. One of the important elements of the new CSR legislation is the synergy between corporate entities and NGOs. When that gets going, there will be a lot more bite into what CSR actually does and it will also help to maximize the sustainability of CSR initiatives on the ground. In the end, the spirit of CSR is what we can do for the poor, the marginalized and the deprived. I see CSR as a powerful instrument in India's social development. Welcome back to United Technologies presents Transforming Cities, Transforming India. This week we are looking at how able we are as a country when it comes to sustainability via corporate social responsibility. Citizens for the City is the first of its kind path-changing initiative in India where corporate social responsibility encourages members of the society to take ownership of local issues and help overcome development challenges in partnership with the local authorities. You know the magnitude of problems across Indian cities, the problems are similar. The frustration of citizens whether you are in Bangalore or Bombay or Delhi or even Coimbatore, Hyderabad the problems are similar. Citizens for the City, which is a first of its kind uh, sponsored CSR partnership by United Technologies Corporation, is the first time that you actually have a neighborhood improvement partnership as a competition. So what we've done is we've reached out to RWAs, to NGOs, to CBOs, which is you know community-based organizations like Rotary, etc., to actually be able to participate in their area. Now the idea of a neighborhood improvement partnership is that communities come forward with plans for their neighborhoods and the city corporation which is BBMP in Bangalore, they become enabler of the program that the community wants to do. Now this is unique in one respect, you see traditionally communities make demands of the city corporation saying do this, fix the pothole, do the lake, whatever. In this case, the community comes forward, plans for what needs to be done, works the budgets, works the numbers and actually even finds the finances and all they are effectively telling the city corporation, help us see this plan through. When we reached out in the beginning to various citizen bodies, there really was no identification of, so what's my neighborhood, so what's my locality. 
So you have neighborhoods where there are 23 RWAs in one neighborhood. So who do I apply for? So this identification of the we, of the collective in the Indian context has been fractured. So I keep my area very clean but I don't know what to do if it is my street, five streets, a particular locality or an area. So the biggest challenge was in the understanding of what the scope geographically of this ought to be. A solution that you find for let's say handling garbage in Bangalore can travel well to Trivandrum which has a huge garbage problem and elements of what people are doing here on garbage can be done out there. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. This initiative to foster and support community engagement for sustainable urbanization in Bengaluru paved way to a competition between neighborhood groups in different localities. The task was to come up with sound practical proposals for civic improvement that are innovative and replicable. The prize money, 1 crore rupees. So we chose six sectors in which we invited people to think about the problem, right? Those six sectors were mobility, waste, uh, lakes and environment, off the grid, which is, you know, water power off the grid, public safety and public spaces. These were the six sectors, not that we haven't had projects outside this, it is only indicative. We've linked what we are calling solution seekers. So as a neighborhood, I'm seeking a solution. Who has the answers? The answer could lie within solution providers who could be either another community that have faced the same problem and solved it. It could be a set of experts who are actually working in that domain. It could be a business that is seeking to work with communities to deliver that as solutions. So as, non, as knowledge partners, we have brought in the solution seekers and providers and put them together to ideate. Ideation was not enough, so we've had one-on-one -on -one meetings. What we are looking for though are those interventions that are scalable where not only can we do more of them in Bangalore, but could other cities look at them? If the city does not work, the corporate's business will suffer. Uh, people will spend more time in traffic, they will be less productive. With pollution issues, there will be health problems. So the case we make to corporates that investing in a city is actually good business sense. So consequently, the message to corporates is find ways to channel a part of your CSR budget to make cities better. And because your citizens are involved, it's not something that will change if the government changes. They live there, that's their commitment. If citizens take on the monitoring, the participation, the actual engagement with a particular project, its sustainability is good news to a corporate. Its sustainability is that last mile to a corporate. It's time for yet another break here on Transforming Cities, Transforming India. On the other side, CNBC TV agent Sumit Lakotia is going to be in conversation with Palash Roy Chaudhary of UTC India. He'll share his insights on how companies can make the best use of their CSR outlay. We'll be right back. Yes, actually when we looked at the CSR scenario across corporate India, we realized that there were a lot of variations. There were those who were not spending anything at all or a very small part of their profits and there were companies well known, well established who are spending more. How do we arrive at some kind of a via media? The source that we went to were the guidelines written for the public sector enterprises which were released on the 1st of April 2010. There was a broad band or groups of expenditure prescribed for different sizes of companies and the average of those worked out to around 2%. So we decided to stay with that. Welcome back to United Technologies presents Transforming Cities, Transforming India. Today on this episode, we are focusing on corporate social responsibility. Time now for CNBC TV team Sumit Lakotia to interview Palash Roy Chaudhary of UTC India. He's going to share his insights on how companies can make the best use of their CSR outlay. Here's that conversation. Hi Palash, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, you know, now the government's put out a ruling, so companies need to dedicate 2% of the average of their three years uh, net profit towards CSR activities. But are you seeing a lot of that happening on ground or is it just on paper in the annual reports or is, is that actually starting to make a slow steady effect on the ground? Well, I think it's a very good step with the government's introduction of the 2% Companies Act. Where, people, where companies now have to report on their CSR activities as part of their annual reporting, uh, actually brings CSR to the forefront. You know, 
uh, previously it was at least for uh, many of the small and medium companies in India it used to be an afterthought. Uh, but uh, over the last one year since the bill was introduced we have seen a lot more activity in the in the sector and while these are early days uh, this is absolutely the right step and over the next few years we'll hopefully see a lot of activity on the ground. Do you think uh, eventually it will it'll uh, trickle down so that the SMEs, the small medium enterprise will also start uh, maybe doing it voluntarily and eventually becoming mandatory for them also? We need to define what mandatory is. I mean there is no punitive damages or punishment around it. But having said that, you know, uh, given that there is so much of awareness building on CSR today and once the companies begin to understand that once you integrate CSR into the overall strategy, it's actually beneficial for the business, I think it's a no-brainer. I mean, companies will adopt it very, very openly. Uh, on that note, tell me a little bit about what UTC is doing in, 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 in the CSR space. What are some of the uh, initiatives that you are uh, pioneering here? Let's start with, let's say, product design and development. If you look at our different products, uh, environmental sustainability is a theme that cuts across all of them. So, for instance, the gear turbofan engine that Pratt & Whitney is introducing, it reduces fuel burn by as much as you know 16 percent while reducing noise by 75 percent. Similarly, if you look at Otis, the Gen 2 elevator reduces energy consumption by as much as 75 percent. The 23XRV chiller from Carrier is one of the most efficient screw chillers in the world, 44-45 percent better than the industry average. Similarly, we have Marioff. It's a sprinkler system that uses about 90 percent less water than you know contemporary splinter systems. So the, it starts from there. Product design is integrated into our CSR philosophy. If you look at development of talent, we have one of the most advanced employee development as well as supplier development programs. As a matter of fact, we have spent over a billion dollars in the last few years providing uh, a multitude of training programs to our, uh, not only our, our associates, but also our, our supply chain. Uh, if you look at environmental health and safety, and let me give you some astonishing numbers. Uh, so 2006 was our baseline. So in the last, what, eight, nine years, yeah. while we have managed to grow at double digits, uh, greenhouse gas emissions globally have gone down by 39%. Our water consumption has gone, out, has gone down by 48%. Our air emissions, 79% our industrial waste 48%. So so we, we practice what we preach. Right. So then when you come to uh, India specifically and while we have multiple engagements uh, around the country in four specific areas, one is community development, the second is environmental sustainability, third is education mm -hmm. and fourth is disaster response and, and management. Uh, behind the mall mile, it's a place called Chakarpur and we have adopted that community over the last three years. Uh, we're proud to say that this program uh, has won two national awards this year as the best, best community development program and one Asia Pacific award just in this year. Similarly on the education front we work with an organization called SOS Children's Villages where between UTC corporate and our divisions today we are sponsoring the education of close to 2500 children around the country. There is another very very interesting project that we are doing in, uh, in Bangalore it's called the Citizens for the City where we are encouraging citizen groups uh, to come forward in a, in, a, in a competition format to bring in ideas of how they would like to improve their surroundings and the city. And we have actually instituted a one crore uh, fund yeah. which would be rewarded or awarded to the top three uh, you know, uh, nominations. When you're doing CSR, it has to be a year-on-year project. It cannot be a one-time effort where you go and do a few things and then get out of there. And that's the essence of most of our work. It's multi-year. And one of the things that we ensure, at least at UTC, is uh, all our associates are engaged. So employee engagement is a key element mm -hmm. so that there is continuity uh, in the project. And that's how we pick our projects, which is, which, which is closest to our factories, our, uh, our operations, so that our associates can get continuously uh, engaged in that. Palash, when something like CSR is happening, which is a great thing, you don't know the positive effects unless you're actually measuring it. So how does one go about measuring CSR? Again, very good question. And we've got to measure what you treasure. Uh, the government of India has recently started a program where they're creating the first batch of professionally trained CSR professionals. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we have sent five of our associates into that program. So it starts there when people understand how to create a program 
right from uh, you know uh, where the program should be, what is the target audience, what kind of impact are we are we going to have, and it cannot be a one-time impact, a sustained impact over the years. How are going to, how are we going to measure that? Well, thank you so much, Palash, for talking to us, and here's hoping that the way ahead is really bright for the country with the help of CSR. Thank I'm, you so I'm sure. I'm sure uh, you know, we'll have a bright future. In there. Well, those are ideas there for corporates on how they can best use their financial outlay for corporate social responsibility. With that, we have to wrap up this edition for this week. Next week, we'll take a look at how we can save our environment as well as reduce energy costs to measures that can significantly bring down consumption. We we'll focus on sustainable water, renewable energy and waste management. From the entire team here, many thanks for watching. The purpose of bringing in the legislation was to ensure that companies felt an obligation to spend the 2% on CSR activities. If this had been a mere appeal or a set of guidelines, there would have been no real trigger for corporate world to undertake CSR. So the force of the legislation was important to us. Yet at the same time, we also had to balance the compulsion part. And that's why we brought in the principle of what is known as comply or explain. Hence today as it stands, if corporate India complies with the legislation, fine. But if it does not, it has to only provide an explanation as to why it did not. That of course goes into the public domain. So ultimately the public is the real judge of how corporates are performing.